When President Kennedy came to Harvard as a young college student, he wasn't the best student. He had been a bookworm as a kid, don't get me wrong, he was a smart, smart man. But when he came here for college, wasn't the finest, most enthusiastic student. Had his mind on other things. Social life, just a bit more important. In those days at Harvard, you could get away with it. Eventually, however, he became a profound student, particularly of history. When he was a young man, he took a semester in Germany. And it was in the middle of, shall we say, one of his adventures, for those of you who've studied the life of President Kennedy, who, where he was standing on a balcony in a hotel looking down at the street and he saw the Nazi army moving past. And he realized that history was moving right past him. And he didn't want it to pass him by. Tonight, you're going to hear from a modest man who will tell you that it's not a big deal. And this isn't history. But History is moving past us right now, and I know that it's not going to pass us by. This is an important moment. Let's give a big hand for Congressman Pete Stark. Uh, Mandy, Vern Countryman. Thank you. Um, thank all of you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. I, my 12-year-old son, who is not sure that he's comfortable without knowing what happens in an afterlife, has been asking me what a humanist is, and now I'm going to have to explain it to him. Uh, and I'm not sure that that will be so easy. But I am pleased that I'm in Cambridge and not in Salem. I, uh, <laughs> I feel somewhat more comfortable. Um, and Greg, uh, people have talked about, um, in, in some things that I've seen, my being a non-believer. And um, that's perhaps not the case. I, I do believe, uh, and I hope all of you do, it's a question of what you believe in. Uh, I was born I'd like to say I was born poor enough so that I never slept alone till I was married. And I, uh, <laughs> the 80s, on the other hand, brought us, what, Ronald Reagan and the beginning of talk radio and the televangelists. And a guy named Bob Kimball, who was the pr pr president at Star King in a uh, interesting theologian and a dear friend. And I asked him subsequently, as there was an increase in the, in the, uh, the right-wing Christian evangelical movement, and I said, what are they after? And this was in the late 70s, and he said, really, he said, they're the, probably the only group of Christians in this country who do all week what they say they're going to do on Sunday. But he said all they're looking for is a stable community in which to practice, to live. They didn't want people to be against homeschooling. Uh, they, they just wanted an, uh, But that changed with uh, the 80s because suddenly there were people who see they could make some money uh, promoting this on the radio. There were people who could build huge congregations. Uh, there were people who could use it to get political power. And, and so all of a sudden, the 80s took this movement, as I observed it, and made it, uh, turned it into some real political activism. And um, the, I, it was just a change that I observed. It probably went on um, in the, the 90s, uh, late 80s, under Gingrich and the others who took that and made a fine art of this program. But it, it's, a, it's gradually built. Now, uh, unhappily, uh, we just have uh, a block of 
I, well, I guess it's fair. I, this is a nonpartisan group, but I, I'd say that the conservative Republicans are driven largely by a concern for a small group, maybe 20 percent of the Republican um, Party uh, loyalists. And there's, uh, there's a, a concern, uh, and you're seeing it if you follow if with any interest the Republican candidates. Everybody's fussing over whether Thompson or Romney or who's going to be, who's going to serve this, quote, religious right. Um, every, all of the Democratic candidates kind of pander to it. They all say, yeah, I believe, you know, I believe, I believe. But it, they're all about the same. They don't say a lot about what they believe. They just they're, they just believe in, they're religious. And uh, I'm not sure they're getting questioned, and I'm not sure they're trying to decide whether Hillary or John Edward is more religious than the other. The Republicans have that problem because they're going to raise some money from them, and it's of more concern. In the current administration, um, well, my, my chairman, Charlie Rangel from Harlem, who was a, raised in Harlem but raised as a Catholic, and um, I said, Charlie, what's early on? I said, what, what is this president doing, referring to President Bush? And he said, well, you know, uh, if you could beat alcoholism by yourself, without going to the meetings, without seeking professional help, so that's one hell of a big job. And I suspect it is. And I suspect that, as Charlie would say to me, if Bush could control his alcoholism, uh, he might feel he was born again. And give it, spot him that. That's fair game. And then, if the Supreme Court made you president, you might think you got a message from God. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but the real worry is if you start talking to him every day, you may need some other professional help. Uh, I'm concerned now not as much about the push between secularism and religious religiosity in our country as I am in the world. Uh, the treatment of women is a matter of religious uh, and areas in which I wouldn't tolerate. Uh, I'm not sure it's my role to tolerate, but I'm sure it's not my role to allow our laws to accommodate their religious ideas. But as you're going to find, as we all find, that three quarters of the people on this globe aren't Christians. And um, they have some very uh, def long running uh, traditions that are religious in nature. And I see that as something that we're going to have to learn to deal with. We're sure not learning to deal with it in Iraq. Um, and um, if we think that we could run around and change these long-held beliefs at the point of a gun. But I do think that this world, which is becoming ever smaller, uh, presents a challenge to us to accommodate uh, the lifestyle that has been built on very strict religious tradition. And I, I see that as... Uh, what we're going to have to deal with in the future. Do you plan to run again and be the first congressman elected as a non-theist? Yes. <laughs>